In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the power of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the holiness of the Spirit be with each and every one of you. My sisters and brothers, welcome to our celebration of the first Wednesday after Ash Wednesday, our first Wednesday in Lent. Today we're going to hear about Jonah and the whale, a story I'm sure we all remember. So welcome on behalf of St. Anthony's Guild. As we prepare to hear God's word and to continue to celebrate at this holy table, let us first pause and call to mind those times we have not seen God in ourselves or in one another. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family always performing good works of charity. So comfort them with your protection and lead them graciously to the gifts in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Father Michael will now do our first reading for us. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah went, made ready, and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walking, announcing, For the days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in land. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath, so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A heart contrite and humble O oh God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humble, O oh God, you will Amen. not spurn. Have mercy on me, O oh God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offenses. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin. Cleanse me. A heart humble, contrite and God, humble, O oh God, you, you will not spurn. A clean heart create for me, O oh God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me out, not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A heart contrite and humble, O oh God, you will not spur. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humble, O oh God, you will not spur. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spare.
My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given to it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon right here. At the judgment, the people of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how about that Jonah? We can all take a little comfort from Jonah. He is the only prophet in the Bible who begins by refusing to do what God asks him to do. Appalled by what God wants of him, he immediately headed about as far from Nineveh as it's possible to go. But having saved him from the whale's belly, God calls Jonah again. And this time, the second time, Jonah responds. Remember, this is a God who gives us all second chances. And the reason is because when one hears the word of God, one cannot remain neutral any longer. The word of God should actually upset us and disturb us. It's challenging to us, and it calls us to constantly to be more and better than we are. Hearing the word of God demands a response from us. When you hear the word of God, you cannot simply remain sitting on a fence. You can't be neutral. Hearing the word of God asks all of us to make a decision. Are we for or against what God is asking? Just like Jonah had to do. Pope Benedict wrote this. Whenever Christ has been heard, it cannot be as if nothing happened. Whenever Christ touches us, something changes in us. This point brings us back to the fact that we have to be different than before we heard God's word. Something in us must change. The word of God must disturb us because of the challenge it puts before us every time we really hear it. We cannot be the same as we were before when we have been touched by Jesus. As it says in the psalm, if today you hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts against his message. This change reaches down right into the depths of our souls and renews us from the deepest places of our hearts. This change takes place in our gut, not in our head. It takes place in our heart, in our soul. It's not about dogmas and laws and rules and regulations. It's about love and the depth of the human heart. It's always about how we care for one another. The word of God asks us, demands from us, challenges us to be different than before we heard it. It calls us to be more loving, more kind, more charitable, more generous than before we heard God's word. The more we as Christians are renewed from the heart, the better we will understand the mystery of God's love and the change that can happen in our lives. Jonah knew this. He knew this one thing. It's only from the heart that one sees rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. My sisters and brothers, pray that this our offering may be acceptable to God, the Creator, the Almighty. Amen. Look with favor, Lord, on this sacrificial gifts we offer you, and by this holy celebration, bring us free from the bond of sin. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should bring you thanks, humble our sinful pride and contribute to the feeding and care of God's poor. And so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so now we glorify you with the countless angels as we praise you forever in the words of the prophet Isaiah, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Therefore, make these gifts holy, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly suffered into his passion, Jesus took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his life, death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all your holy people. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have fallen in the sleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Remember especially all the beloved dead of those who are watching us now. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, the Saints, Francis, Anthony, and Claire, all who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. It is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gathering our needs in the needs of the church, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on any sin, but on the faith of this your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, grant that what you have given us in your word and in this Eucharist as a pledge of our life everlasting may work for our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of all the friars, and all of those at St. Anthony's Guild who are with us today, we wish you a very happy Lent and a holy Lent. Join us, especially for the three pillars of Lent, as we say, that of prayer, that of fasting, especially from food or things that keep us from God and loving one another, and also for our work with the poor. We cannot continue our work with the poor without your help. So please be generous with St. Anthony's Guild and all the work we do for the poor. God bless you and thank you for being with us today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face to you and smile on you. May God bless you and all those you love. The God we call Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Be well and safe. <laughs>